There are a lot of ways to perform statistical analysis in Excel, but one of the easiest ways to summarize your data is by using pivot tables. Let me show you how to create one of these useful tools. Let's start with the employment data set. Here you can see some data on the employees of a company. We've got their names, genders, their hire dates, the type of position they hold in the company, their salaries, and the region of the country they work in. If you're using your own data, you'll want to make sure that there are no blank rows or columns in your data table, and that each column has a header as we have here. To create a pivot table, begin by selecting the Insert tab on the ribbon. On the left side of the tab, you'll see the Tables group and the Pivot Table button. If you click on the top of the button, you'll get a dialog box to create a pivot table. If you click on the down arrow button, you'll get the choice between creating a pivot table and a pivot chart. We'll get to pivot charts in a later video. For now, let's focus on pivot tables. Once the pivot table dialog box is open, you'll see that Excel has automatically highlighted your data and included the table range in the Select a Table or Range box. If you want to create a pivot table with a different portion of the table, or from a different worksheet in the workbook, simply highlight the table range field in the dialog box, and then select a new portion of your workbook. If you're using an external data source, such as an Access database, select the External Data Source option, click on Choose Connection, and select your data source. We'll go ahead and use the full data table for this example. Now you just need to decide if you want Excel to place the pivot table on its own worksheet or in the existing worksheet. It'll be easier to learn analytical techniques if you can see the original data. So select Existing Worksheet, then set the location by clicking on the cell where you want the upper left corner of the table to be placed. Now click on OK. You now see that Excel has placed a blank grid where you asked it to create the pivot table. There is also now a pivot table field list pane open on the right side of the screen. This pane will allow you to control how your pivot table will look and make changes very quickly if you need different information. There are five windows in the field list pane by default. At the moment there is no need to change this, but if you want to, you can do so by clicking the button at the upper right corner of the pane. The Choose Field to Add to Report box at the top of the field list pane shows you all of the columns you selected for inclusion in your pivot table. The check boxes allow you to decide which fields to use and which to leave out. Or you can simply drag the field names from the Choose Fields box to fill in one of the four boxes below. The Report Filter box contains fields that will allow you to select subsets of data to be shown in the table. For example, if we place the Region field in the Report Filter box, then we could filter the pivot table to display only data from specific regions of the country. And you'll see that the Report Filter is located at the top of the pivot table area. The Column Labels box contains the fields that control which data are shown in the columns of the table. For example, if you drag the Gender field to the Column Label box, you'll see that the table automatically creates columns for female, male, and a grand total combining the two. The Row Label box has a similar function to the Column Label box, 
but now you'll be deciding which fields to use for the rows of the pivot table. If you drag the position field to the row labels box, you'll see that the pivot table is updated so that the rows will contain information for each of the different types of positions. I've placed one field in each of these three boxes so far, and our table looks pretty good. But you should know that you can place more than one field in a box. For example, I could create rows for each gender under each type of position just by dragging the gender field to the row labels box. Now it's easy to compare men and women in each of these employee positions. But maybe I don't want the data set up that way. Maybe I want to show the data for different positions under each gender group. I can do this by dragging the position field in the row labels box to place it under the gender field. Using these drag and drop field names, you can experiment with creating different types of pivot tables to suit your needs. We'll learn more about formatting in upcoming videos. For now, I'll put the gender field back in the column labels box. Our table looks nice now, but we really only have an organizational scheme at this point. We know that the rows will refer to different employment positions and the columns to men and women but we need to include the substantive data. What type of information about these people will we include in the table? The values box contains the field that controls which data are summarized in the pivot table itself. Drag the salary field to the values box and you'll see its data added to the table. Notice that Excel automatically created the sum of the salary field for the table. So we can see that female administrative workers made a combined $731,000 while male administrative workers made a combined $628,000. When we add the salaries of men and women together for administrative workers they add up to $1,360,000. You can also see that the values box indicates that the values represent the sum of salary. You'll learn how to change this in one of the next videos, but for right now, pat yourself on the back. You just created your first pivot table. Before we wrap things up, you'll want to take note of the three buttons on the right side of the Options tab on the ribbon under the Show group. The Field List button lets you show or hide the pivot table list pane on your screen. Plus or minus buttons let you expand and collapse particular rows and columns in your pivot table. You get this option when you nest multiple variables in rows or columns. If we place gender back in the row labels box, you'll see the expand and collapse buttons on the row labels in your pivot table. The plus minus button hides these expand and collapse buttons. Finally, the field headers button hides or shows the column labels and row labels drop down boxes in your pivot table. This is useful when you want to clean up your table for a presentation. Creating pivot tables is pretty easy once you get the hang of it. Play around and see how you can organize the data in different ways. In the next video, I'll show you how to format your pivot table to get more refined results that look great. I'll see you there.